So ever since four-wheel drivers have had winches, we've been using snatch blocks like this one made out of steel with bearings in them, fairly big and heavy. But now that's being supplanted by the new breed of lightweight aluminium smash rings and I've been doing a fair bit of testing to find out which of them is more efficient and how they stack up against the old steel blocks with bearings in them. But as I've been doing that testing I've come up with seven key things you've got to think about if you're going to be buying a snatch ring. So here's the six rings that I've been using. It's the Camp Boss, Red Winches, Drifter, George 4x4, Sabre, and Factor 55. So working load limit, this is the amount of force the ring is actually designed to take. It's not the amount of force that the ring will actually break at, that's not stated for any one of these, but they all have WLLs or working load limits. Now most of them are 8,000 kilograms, that's the Red, um, the uh, Drifter and the George. Um, the Camp Boss is rated to 10,000 um, kilograms. The Factor 55, 9,000, and the Sabre is 12 and a half. Now, some of them are available in higher capacities than what I have here, but even so, 8,000 kilograms is going to be plenty for a four-wheel drive of three to four tonnes. You're really not going to break it, so I don't have any concerns about strength with any of them. So, sheave diameter is the next point, and that is the diameter of the sheave and that dictates the diameter of the rope as it goes around the sheave. Now that's expressed in something called D slash D or DD and this is what it looks like. So the DD ratio is the diameter to diameter ratio and what that means is so we've got a sheave we put a rope around it we then take the diameter of the sheave and that's the big D we then take the diameter of the rope that's the small D. So let's say we've got a 10 mil rope, 5 to 1 DD, that gives us a 50 mil overall diameter of the sheave with a 5 to 1 DD. So just how big should that be? So the recommendation from rope manufacturers such as Samson is around 8 to 1 or uh, 10 to 1. However, that is for commercial use. Four-wheel drive use is fairly infrequent. Most people only use their winches once, twice a year, if that. Fairly low stress because you often don't get up anywhere near the amount of uh, maximum capacity of your winch and it's fairly short-lived. So you can get away with a smaller DD ratio and the thinking is maybe around 5 to 1 or or, or greater there. So we don't need to go quite to the 10 to 1 ratios. Now there's two types of bend radius. One is the dynamic bend radius um, and the other one is the static bend radius. Because the rope is actually moving in the dynamic bend radius it's got to be greater than the static. The dynamic you need at least 5 plus, the static can be 1.5 to 2 times the rope diameter. Okay, so given that most four-wheel drive rope is around about 8 to 12 mil, normally about, let's, let's go for 12, then we really want a DD of at least 60 mil, preferably 80 or 90, um, any less than that, and the ring's still going to work, but you're just going to be placing the rope under more stress, because you think about it this way, that rope is under more stress because this bit here is under compression and it's not really holding any of the weight whereas the outside there is overly compressed so the greater the diameter um, the better basically the less stress on the rope. Now out of the rings these four are pretty much the same diameter. Um, the Sabre is actually, as you'd expect, the largest diameter by quite a long way, but surprisingly the Factor 55, despite being the widest, or well, one of the wider ones, um, and the greatest diameter, its internal diameter is actually quite small. Um, and now that's got advantages we'll come to later on, but that's only got a 55mm sheave diameter. Now all snatch rings require that you use a soft shackle and that means that the ring actually 
slides against a soft shackle like that. Now that means that we've got to take care of it. So we want a nice large bend radius over here so that we don't bend the soft shackle too much. And we want the surface here to be as smooth as possible. We'll come on to that in a, in a moment. Now, all of these four have a relatively narrow design and it sort of goes um, for a bit of a curve, flat, and then it sort of curves up again. So that doesn't give you a great bend radius. So here's a cross section of a snatch ring. You can see that this design has got a fairly curved base which supports the soft shackle nicely and evenly distributes the weight. Whereas the other design here has a curve, a bit of a flat and a curve again. That is a greater bend radius and doesn't support the shackle as well and therefore places it under a bit more stress than is necessary. The sabre is a bit thicker as you can you can see there and it's got a continuous curve there so it actually supports the soft shackle a bit better and the Factor 55 is um, even better again it's actually a little bit wider even than the sabre and it's got this fantastic smooth radius here as well and also over the top um, it actually bevels down a little bit so that the soft shackle doesn't actually touch the outside here where the markings are or the sort of um, indentations where they've got those retention teeth. So I think Factor 55 has done the best job of making their design soft shackle friendly. Now I do have some evidence to support the fact that taking care of the soft shackle is important. So this soft shackle has done a lot of winching and it's done it with these, um, this set of rings over here. Now this soft shackle from Factor 55 has only been used with the Factor 55 ring. And there's actually a difference between the two. So if I try and pull them straight, you'll see that there's quite a distinct sort of bend there because that's sort of kinked in. And with the Factor 55, it sits a lot straighter. And you know, it hasn't bent as much. There's not as much evidence of um, deformation. There's a bit of heat buildup, which has kind of compressed the rope in both cases. But again, it's not as significant on the Factor 55. Now, I think that's not so much due to the design of the soft shackle, but I think it's more due to the Teflon um, impregnation here, as well as the fact it's got this lovely smooth internal radius. Now that that said, um, I've done a lot of winching with these um, on the test, probably more winching um, than a normal recreational user might do in even five or, or 10 years. So these soft shackles are still perfectly usable, they're just a little bit um, um, deformed. But that said, you always want to take best care of your gear. And uh, I think there's definitely something to be said for the way Factor 55 have designed the inside of their ring here. Okay, now we want to look at flange depth, which is how deep the flange is, which is this part here, the indentation. Now you want that to be reasonably deep because you don't want the rope coming out when it gets loose. Now this George one here is probably the worst because it's only really just a little bit deeper than the rope. The um, rest of these three are pretty similar. The Sabre's quite good as you can see, sits quite nicely um, down there, it's quite a, quite a decent gap. But the best is the Factor 55, which has by far the greatest flange depth, 33 mil, but also these really handy little retention teeth here, and they do actually work. They do actually help stop the uh, rope coming out. Now that said, even with the George one, which is the narrowest flange and, and the shallowest, I haven't really found a problem with the rope coming out um, at any point. I do think that when you're winching, you're always sort of taking a bit of slack and then just before it goes, you start putting the load on it, you go check anyway. So I really don't think it's much of a problem that things go slack in and out. And if you find that your rope's coming in and out like that all the time, you're probably overly shock loading your winch load, rope load anyway. So I think this whole concept of the rope jumping out of snatch rings is a bit overrated, to be honest. Now, something else about the flanges is that you want the rope to sit centrally. Now, if you look at this one, the rope can actually move from side to side and it can actually get a bit of a side load, which isn't great. Whereas when you've got a sort of curved or um, circular one, then there's no way the rope can move from side to side, which is great because it locates it centrally in a central load and you don't get friction loss from the rope moving side to side. And the same is also true of the Factor 55, which again um, has got a nice circular, not V-shaped, but nice circular um, sort of uh, groove there for the rope to sit in. 
So here's a cross-section view of the snatch ring again and here's what some of the groove designs look like. Then there's also the V and then finally there's the curve as well. Now if we put a rope in there you can see that that's just going to squash flat and that's not great for the rope. Here it's going to just squash into a V shape, not great either. But the circular sort of parabolic shape actually is perfect because that best supports the rope and it also centres the rope nicely in the statch block as well. So that's the design you want to look for. So on the left, the Drifter, the Cat Boss and the Red have a flat bottomed groove, whereas the George, the Factor 55 and the Sabre on the right have more of a circular one which better supports the rope. Now surface friction is important because the soft shackle is going to be sliding over this area here under some stress and obviously you want that to have as little friction as possible for efficiency but also so it doesn't actually abrade the rope. So to my mind um, I don't think there should be any indentations um, around this area here at all and the uh, worst one is probably the camp boss which has got quite heavy indentations there and also it's kind of curved up a little bit as well so you get kind of a slight slight pinch point there. Um, red winches have slightly um, got in indented uh, text there. George very smooth um, but which is which is great um, but uh, the text slightly starting to rub off there. The two best are the Sabre and the Factor 55. Um, the Sabre has the text all the way around the edge but because it's kind of curved like that sort of goes around in this shape here there's actually not much stress of the soft shackle against the text area here which is which is good it does touch but it's but it's un, not under much stress most of the stress comes under this sort of curved area here and the best i think is the factor 55 where you've got this very definite sort of drop down there and then that allows um, the soft shackle to completely miss this area around the circumference here, which is where they've put all of the indentation and the text and also these retention teeth points there as well. Now, size and light, obviously you want it to be as small and light as possible and um, these are around about the 320, 360 gram mark, I think this one's the lightest, about 314. The Sabre, as you'd expect, is the heaviest, 877 grams, but that's actually still a featherweight compared with the ARB snatch block here which is actually one of the lighter snatch blocks at around 2.3 kilos whereas this one here is over 3 kilograms so you could actually carry three of these for every one of these and they'd probably take up barely any more room and they'd actually be lighter um, and you know they're now these things are now becoming really quite cheap so I do recommend you carry maybe um, two, three, even four of these because then you can do all sorts of amazing winch riggings and just watch my other videos to see how creative you can get with some uh, rigging options with pulleys. And finally we come to the markings on the snatch rings. Now I think there's at least three things that should be shown. One is the working load limit and they've all pretty much got it. The camp boss actually has it put on the side there so it's not obvious but they do have it. Um, but if you're going to put a working load limit on, put it in kilograms and pounds. If you put it in, in pounds, Australians are going to get confused. You put it in kilograms, Americans are going to get confused. And Red Winches have actually put it in kilonewtons, which will confuse everybody. So uh, I think that the best one is, is Sabre, who've actually put it in both. Um, the other thing we want to sit, see on these rings is the rope diameter, the minimum rope diameter and the maximum rope diameter and that's marked on pretty much all of them which is good and I also wouldn't mind seeing a maximum breaking strain although none of them have actually put that on there. Now one thing the drifter says is um, 2x mechanical advantage well no that is not necessarily the case depends how you rig it you might be using this and get zero mechanical advantage or more than two to one mechanical advantage if you use more than two of them so a little bit misleading to put 2x mechanical advantage there i feel 
So here's a quick look at the specifications. I'm going to highlight the best and the least or the worst in uh, green and red. So the best or highest working load limit is the Sabre at 12 and a half tonnes and the lowest is the Red Drifter and George at 8 tonnes. But that's still plenty for full drive use and for some of them you can get them in different capacities. The lightest is the Red and the heaviest is the Sabre as the biggest unit. That's what you'd expect. Sheave diameter, again the biggest unit is the Sabre and that's got the greatest sheave diameter and Factor 55 has the smallest. Sheave depth, um, Factor 55 uh, wins that. Remember they've also got the retention teeth as well. Um, Sabre close behind of 23 and then the smallest is George but again I didn't really find a problem with the rope falling out or even the George on test. So to summarise I've used all of these rings fairly extensively, winch them in different configurations, all of them will do the job. But there are three which I feel are a little bit better than the others due to some of their design features. The Camp Boss, the Red and the Drifter are pretty much identical in design, whereas these three I think have some features worthy of your attention. So all of these three have a nice groove properly supporting the uh, rope in the centre. Um, they are, all have a fairly smooth um, outside here, at least where the um, soft shackle will touch around the out outside there and they've all gone to some effort to make the internal radius here soft shackle uh, friendly particularly the factor 55 which is quite wide and also has that Teflon um, Im impregnation. Now the differences between them I think um, are, are size. Um, the Sabre is the largest so that's going to give you the greatest uh, sheave diameter there so that's going to be kindest on, on your winch ropes. If you do a lot of winching maybe consider something larger there. Factor 55 is the smallest but they are coming out of an XL version there as well. The George one is fairly small but it's got a fairly small flange there. Again didn't really find that a problem in, in testing. Uh, this has the advantage of being the smallest and lightest compared um, to these other two. So I'd say basically pick between these three. My two personal favourites I guess are these. Um, I really like the design of the Factor 55 for all the different reasons, RRP, Teflon etc and it's relatively small um, and I do like the fact that Sabre have gone for a larger diameter to just make it a little bit kinder to, to the winch rope there. But all of them um, do the job and I think for the occasional recreational user um, they will all work but these three are my preference. So the ideal snatch ring, first thing you've got to look at is your DD ratio. Now, depending on how much winching you do and how heavy it is, that should be something from 5 to 1 or 10 to 1, which translates to around about 50, 60 millimetres up to about 100 millimetres um, for a four-wheel drive rope, which is typically 10 or 12 mil. Now, the second point is your flange depth. Uh, you want that to be at least 15, 20 millimetres um, because whilst I haven't really found much of a problem with rope falling out of these things, a bit of extra flange depth does, does help, as do, do the retention teeth. You also want a nice circular bend radius for your soft shackle because the soft shackles do take a bit of a hammering and there should be a smooth surface so anything where the soft shackle rubs over there shouldn't be any indentations um, there just to take care of the soft shackle. You want a U-shaped sheave or groove for the rope, very important, not anything with a flat bottom so that you're basically maximising that bend radius. You want it to be as small as light as possible which kind of contradicts with number one but um, you know can't necessarily have everything and markings. You want your working load limit in kilograms and pounds, rope diameter millimetres and inches. And finally, I think it would be great if it was brightly coloured so you don't lose it when you're out in the field. So thanks for watching. Hope you found that useful and please stay tuned to the channels, like, subscribe, etc. for more content on cars, four-wheel drives, towing and whatever you readers find interesting. Any questions, drop them in the comments. Thanks, bye.